to be talking about the latest updates on the um, uh, therapeutic uh, possibilities uh, for cell-based therapies uh, in regenerative medicine and neurological disorders, um, giving some updates on the science uh, as a, we currently understand uh, about the mechanisms of action uh, for different types of cell-based therapies and uh, what are some of the latest clinical trials uh, that um, are demonstrating the safety as well as some clinical trials showing some evidence that uh, some of these approaches uh, may actually uh, improve recovery uh, for patients with stroke and other neurological disorders. You know, there's been over 10 to 15 years worth of research uh, looking at um, various different uh, types of, of studies uh, with respect to cell-based therapies and animal models. Um, and I think we've learned a lot, you know, in that time period. Uh, many people originally had thought that perhaps um, cell-based therapies uh, could be used to generate uh, new brain cells. Um, you know, and, and I think that, you know, what we've really come to understand is, you know, for those approaches right now that have gone forward to clinical trials, main mechanisms really are uh, more about um, trying to help the brain to heal itself. Um, so in the concept here is reducing or changing the inflammatory responses after injury in the brain, as well as um, enhancing um, intrinsic repair uh, that can occur within the brain in and of itself. Um, so the brain does have capacity for repair after an injury like stroke. Um, and cell-based therapies are helping to augment uh, those various different processes that are involved in repair. I mean, so that's what we've come to understand. And what's really interesting is that the intravenous administration of different types of cell-based therapies, these cells most likely, they're not entering into the brain in any great quantities, uh, but they seem to be doing something really interesting, which is they are changing the responses within the various different organs of our body, like the lungs, the spleen, and, and other types of cells in our bloodstream. And those effects uh, within our lung and our spleens and our blood cells, the effect on them, those tissues, that's having an impact on the brain. So it's a very indirect way of, of actually thinking about an effect on the brain. But, you know, we can imagine that because there are immune cells, for example, within the body that are circulating up into the brain after an injury, those cells are being modified by cell-based therapies. And those cells are changing the environment within the brain in and of itself and tweaking things in a way that the brain is undergoing more repair uh, than, let's say, you know, more injury. And lastly, uh, we've come to understand as well that cell-based therapies are uh, releasing various different, very small uh, nano-sized uh, exosomes and microvesicles. They themselves actually could enter into the brain and re-engineer tissues within the brain and, and change structure, uh, again, in the, in the direction of repair. And it's been a fascinating area to see how an intravenous administration could be a, potentially effective. Um, and uh, But of course, the, the talk also does speak to other studies that are looking at more direct delivery routes, uh, intrathecal delivery routes, or even direct intracerebral injection as well, uh, depending upon the intention and the purpose uh, overall. So we, we yet to know, you know exactly what the optimal delivery routes are, uh, but it's really going to depend upon the intention and the goals uh, you know, for, you know, for the specific disease in mind.